Hi everyone, Father Lamb here. It's Wednesday, July 13th. And you know, last week we were talking a little bit about, well, call it the three A's. First one was awareness, being aware of what's going on inside us. Next was our attitude. And then checking our attitude, then what our action's gonna be. And I mentioned on Sunday uh, about taking one day this week and not complaining. That's kind of like looking at our attitude, if you will, before we take action. And I know I joked on Sunday, those who were there or heard it on, on YouTube here, that whenever I've done this in the past and kind of taken a day and say, okay, this day I'm not going to complain, the first thing I think about when I wake up is, ah, oh, darn, I can't complain today. And we're so used to doing that, our attitude sometimes, that we just get into this rut. And that's why we need that awareness, first of all. Awareness that, yeah, I, I do sometimes complain too much. And let's try to shift out of that by changing our attitude. Well, this week, this today, I'd like to just look at something else. Uh, a line that I learned from my parents, and I know every one of you have heard this. You've probably heard it most of your lives. And the line is simply, let go and let God. We've all heard that, you know? And probably sometimes have struggled with that in our own lives. And sometimes I think, that line, let go and let God, means different things at different times in our lives. So sometimes like letting go is just letting go of something that's bothering you. Someone drives you crazy, they cut you off in traffic, or you're worried about your children or your aging parents or your boss at work and stuff's going on. We're carrying all this stuff. And at a certain point it's like, let go. Like let go of it. And then let God in to give you the peace and the grace that you want. Because otherwise we're fighting life. And so very often letting go can be a very positive thing for us. And also just letting go of the negative attitudes, like I was talking about a moment ago. Like today, I'm gonna to let go of complaining. And even though we may fail at it, God's very pleased that we're trying to deal with it in our lives. What is it that you need to let go of to be in a closer relationship with Christ? Because we're all struggling with this, my brothers and sisters. Letting go and letting God. Now. You may get to a point where, yeah, it's great, Father, but easier said than done. And that's true. Sometimes you're like, let go of it, and it's like it's still right here. Well, sometimes you can say, let go, just figure, kind of figuratively pushing it away from yourself, and that works. Sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes you gotta pray about it. Let go, I need to pray for that person I'm struggling right now to love. Let go and pray for them. And sometimes you need to talk about it. And this is an important step. Like, to get a friend of yours and say, you know what, I'm holding on to something, I gotta let go of it, would you just listen to me? And here's an important point. Like what's the difference between talking about it to let it go and talking about like the person where we might drag someone through the mud? That's totally different. So our motive is important. My reason to talk about this person is to let go of this. If my motive is to drag them through the mud and to pull you in on this and we get ugly talking about the person, that's not good. So we have to have a good motive. So you grab a friend of yours and say, look, I really need to let go of this. I'm, I'm unable to on myself. And you talk to that person about it. And sometimes that helps at just letting go. Have that other human there in your presence sort of hearing you and allowing you to get all that out so you can let go and let God. And I think too, as we struggle through this, part of it is letting go of God's substitutes in our lives. Ultimately, in the end, it's just you and God, me and God, you know, each one of us individually with God. And sometimes in our prayer, we get ourselves all distracted and we then can fall into God's substitutes. Like you're feeling bad at the end of the day, it's a hard day, and none of these things may not even be sinful or wrong. It's just it's so easy, like, I think I'll have a drink, you know, relax. Totally understandable, nothing wrong with that. But if we're always going to these God's substitutes, then we have a problem. So whatever it is you turn to, you know, I like ice cream, vanilla ice cream at the end of the night. It's great, watch mindless TV. Nothing wrong on a certain night in doing that, but if we're always doing that, these become God's substitutes and we don't go to God. It could be anything, you know, you know, the drinking, the drugs, we could get into the media is so easy, all those distractions, uh, check my emails, you know, let's see what's going on on Facebook, uh, play video games, solitaire, I mean, name it, all these distractions become a God substitute. So we gotta let go of all of that. And this is what the great saints talk about, attachment and detachment. If you wanna know how attached you are to something or someone, just let it go for a few hours and see how you feel. 
put your phone on the side there and don't check it for five hours and see how you feel. And you feel that pull toward your phone. That's the attachment. And the saints want us to get into that detachment so that we're left with God. There are too many God substitutes in our culture. Let me give you an example. And this is so simple. And uh, maybe I shared it once before. I don't remember. But when I was doing this, I've been doing this Exodus 90 where you do different asceticism. So you might give up meat, you know, on Wednesdays and Fridays. You might not eat between meals and so on. One of the asceticism was simply not putting any sweetener in your coffee or tea. So I drink Irish tea every morning and I like to put some milk in it. And I just love that. So on this time of asceticism, I couldn't put milk in my tea. Well, let me tell you something, I found that pretty annoying. <laughs> and in the beginning I was like, come on, does God really care whether I put milk in my tea? Like, it's not that important, this is stupid, okay? And then as I was struggling with that, because I tried to drink without the milk in it, it just didn't taste right, I didn't like it, I just want my milk in there. And then when I sat with that in prayer, I realized, Pat, Jesus Christ suffered and died for you, for your salvation. Take that personally, everyone. We gotta take it personally. And I'm not willing to give up a little bit of milk for the Lord. I mean, that's pretty sad and trivial. And what you begin to see there, see, it's not about the milk. It's about my inner attitude. I want what I want when I want it. And that's the struggle in the spiritual life. It's that self-will. And it's exactly what Jesus struggled with in the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, take this cup from me. I don't want it. But then he said, your will, not mine, be done. All of us are struggling with letting go and letting God. That is a struggle in the spiritual life. But try it this week to let go. When you find yourself getting burdened by so many things, let go, let God, leave it alone. Let that peace into your heart. See, that's what God is calling us to, to let go of the God substitutes and just be with Jesus. God bless you.